piacerebbe avere una barca? I bet you'd like a boat, and of course it would have to be comfortable and spacious, inside and out. Certo, dovrebbe essere molto grande. It would have to be big, have lots of powerful engines, but consume and cost little. Unless it was a trawler, 43-foot European boat of the year. It's just asking to be tried out. This is one of the most contemporary models designed and built with real ideals like energy efficiency, petrol saving and eco-sustainability. Lo hanno chiamato Eco Trawler 43 Long Distance perché è ideale per chi... It's called the Eco Trawler 43 Long Distance because it's ideal for anyone who wants to do long cruises. But the name also has eco in it, which indicates a certain economy in consumption. For example, they've installed two 330 horsepower engines, the same potential you'd find on a rib or a 10 meter motorboat. You think they'll be enough for this flying bridge though? A good question to start with. It's quite light, weighing in at 12 tons. Fully loaded, it can go up to 16 tons. Here, we're about halfway. Navigare è stupendo perché ci permette di portare con noi le nostre cose, le persone più care. In questo caso, sailing in it is wonderful because we can take everything with us, our nearest and dearest too, as it's our home. But there are two issues too. The first is time perhaps never wanting things to come to an end, and the other will be petrol consumption. So we'll need to do some research on that. If you choose to sail at this speed, 7.5 knots, you can really take advantage of the boat for everything it has. Relax, take some sun, read a book, cook, eat. E a questa andatura, ripeto, 7 nodi e mezzo, and going at this speed, yes, 7.5 knots, petrol consumption is 15 litres an hour. That means we're using 2 litres a mile on a boat this big. Quite mad. Allora, supponiamo di partire da qui, da San Giorgio di Nogaro in... So let's suppose we set off from here, San Giorgio di Nogaro in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia the most northern part of the Adriatic. We can cruise down the Croatian coastline, maybe shoot across to Gargano and discover the beauty spots of Puglia. Well, I get to the bottom, right down to Santa Maria de Luca. We'll have done about 400 miles. If we do a couple of hours every morning and maybe a couple every afternoon, four hours in total per day, at this speed, we'd have done a fantastic cruise in 12 days. And how much do you think it would cost? avremmo consumato circa 800 litri di gasolio, che al costo attuale sono più o meno... We'd have used 800 litres of petrol and an actual cost of more or less 1,200 euros. Not much for six people. And this boat could come with three cabins, sleep in six. OK, but how much does the boat cost? Well, to reply to that question, we need to consider two things. The first is that a boat that comes from a well-respected boatyard will always hold its value. The other is quality price ratio. At Cranky on this theme is ahead of the game, as we saw when we visited one of its four production plants, the one in Rogolo, to be precise. What makes this boatyard so special? 
Maybe not everyone knows that this boat is essentially handmade. Yep, put together almost completely by hand. This almost romantic aspect adapts itself perfectly to building exclusive, unique pieces. It's very costly though. If you're looking for the optimal boat at the optimal price, there's only one solution, and it's called industrialization. In their highest periods of productivity, Cranky were cranking out a new yacht every 2 hours and 42 minutes. The four production plants are steady in organisation. Furnishing, components and men deliver a production cycle so precise it can only be described as similar to a Swiss watch. Not by chance, then, that Switzerland is just behind that mountain. They have spent huge amounts of money to get these results, producing enormous and perfect plants. But thanks to the industrialization, the cost of this yacht, the Eco Trawler 43 Long Distance, is very competitive. 400,000 euros plus tax, more or less. Do you want to see what you get for that money? OK, let's have a look inside and on deck. Starting with the terrace, which has space for six people, a kitchen and a relaxing area. The deck house has space for solar panels. At the bow, as well as the traditional sunbed, which is pretty wide with its adjustable headrests, there's a little sofa that seems made for those romantic moments. In the cockpit, the furnishings are asymmetrical, which is the right solution to organise the space better. The ladder is face-on, going down in the water, so the sofa can be larger. The living room has an area to sit in and kitchen. It's decked out for four people, ideally maximum six. The windscreen is one piece of glass and has big windows all round because the boat needs to constantly give the impression that it's in touch with what's outside. All fittings and electricals have been installed in such a precise way. Perfect. As you've seen, it's all put together perfectly. But let's go back a while to the boatyard. The deck and hull are fitted separately, so the technicians can work easily and more precisely. Then they put the two pieces together. It's a delicate operation but Cranky make it look like child's play. Below deck, there are three possible solutions either with two doubles and two baths, or three cabins, or two cabins and a big wardrobe, for those who'll be using the boat like a houseboat. The cabin at the centre is an ideal layout. There's even a sofa next to the window, a dressing area and ample storage space. The other double is at the bow. It's comfortable, wide, high, airy, and it has the ensuite, so one could call it the captain's quarters. The second bathroom is used as a day bathroom and also serves as a second cabin. The furniture has raised edges, really necessary to stop objects falling, yet quite rare.
Questo scafo viene proposto con i motori D4 alla potenza di 200 The comes with D4 engines either 260 or 300 horsepower or with D6s. This one has D6s. I D6 sono motori molto più grandi, potenti, arrivano al massimo a 4. They're very big, getting up to 430 horsepower. But when they're knocked back to 330 horsepower, like on this boat, true, they lose a little efficiency, but they become eternal. Bene, fino adesso abbiamo visto tutto. Well now, we've seen all the advantages of this trawler. Now we need to do all those things you don't do with a trawler. Paddle down, all at once. Kicks in incredibly. Seems like a boat with an outboard. Picking up steam. Now we'll go up against the waves. And the wind. And we'll see how fast it goes in the worst conditions. We've even got a full tank of water and a half tank of petrol. 22.5 knots. What about a turn? Rudder down. Well, the wake, even if it's got IPS propulsion, isn't excessive. It's very stable. It isn't leaning very much, and there's the wake. But I'm going to try it from the other side too. We need to have perfect symmetry and always keep the throttle at max. I've nothing to say. It's really very comfortable, even for anyone who's not used to sailing, or anyone who isn't used to being so high up in a flying bridge. It's not listing at all. Fantastic. I really like it. The engines are maxed out, 3,600 revs a minute, right there. Look at how fast we're going. With the wind in our favor, we can even go faster than 23 knots, 23 and a half. That's with two 330 horsepower engines on a 43 footer with a long and wide flying bridge like this one. Practically no noise either, and you don't hear the engines in the wind. Secondo me, una barca intelligente perché consuma poco rispetto. I would call it an intelligent boat because it consumes little in relation to how big it is and has a lot to offer for its price. It's an ideal boat for anyone who hasn't even thought about having a boat yet. In San Giorgio di Nagaro in Friuli, between Trieste and Venice, you'll find the Italo Monzino Marine Test Center, where you can try out all the cranky boats, 365 days a year, including holidays. Nella nostra prova abbiamo toccato una velocità massima di 22 knots. Today's tryout saw us getting up to 22.5 knots and a cruising speed of 17.5 knots. I really think this trawler is perfect, and not just because it won European Boat of the Year 2015.